everybody. Welcome back. We're talking with Mike McGonigal, who's making a run to regain a seat on the City Council. Welcome to the program, Mike. Thank you, Frank. Thanks for having me. You know, this is an interesting dynamic. I wanted to ask you this because it kind of maybe gives you a different perspective and uh, maybe a greater depth of understanding, and that is the fact that you happen to be on the City Council for one term a couple of years ago. At that point, after that point, you did not regain re-election in the previous uh, two-year term, and now you're back to be able to try to regain that seat. What sort of things do you think you've learned from your first term and during, during the period of time you happen to have been out of office and being able to try to regain that seat? What are the dynamics that, that the people need to know about that you've, that well, you've acquired? Well, it's, uh, it's interesting and a good question. Um, I, I finished 10th. I finished 105 votes out of um, ninth place and uh, probably 200 votes out of fifth place. It was that tightly wrapped. Close, but no cigar. Exactly, exactly. So what I, what, what I learned about that process is uh, I did very well in the uh, preliminary in, uh, election and I took my foot off the gas a little bit. I didn't do a mailer and I, I didn't uh, attend as many functions because I had other things going on. And, and I think that hurt me. So, uh, and a lot of people told me, Mike, Keep going. Put your foot on the gas, and you know, run this election like it was the first time, like you were being elected the first time. And uh, I, I think that's what I learned. You can never take for granted. Uh, I, I thought I did a fair job when I was on the council. I thought I did a good job. And uh, losing, uh, I didn't lose by a thousand votes. I lost by a, a, a small margin. So that gave me a little bit of comfort, thinking that people did appreciate the work I did. I just didn't sell myself, uh, you know, enough at the end to, to be able to regain a seat. With being able to try to regain a seat on the City Council, Mike, can you give us an indication of what initiatives you'd like to see put in place that you'd like to back and feel strongly about that you'd like to try to, try to be on the Council to follow through on? There's a few things right off the bat. Uh, you know, we've all read and from my two years on the Council and, and being there longer. We have, uh, you know, a uh, belief throughout the city that uh, we're not friendly to our employees here in the city. We, you know, with all the uh, negotiations with unions and things and trying to save money with our health care. We need to be able to get to the point where we can honor our employees and have a good contract with them, but also keep in the fiscal responsibility of the city in line. And I'd like to see that done. I know we, uh, on the school side, the teachers got a contract, but, uh, you know, we have the fire department without a contract, some of the uh, 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 police unions without a contract and you know there are some things that I think it, going forward we need to be able to figure that out to be able to stay fiscally responsible and also be able to uh, make those people feel good about themselves and retain good people it's you know people can go uh, to different cities and find jobs and we want to retain good people and keep them here and keep uh, you know Haverhill growing do you think it's a matter of a lot of the city employees looking over their shoulders whenever they hear that now we've, we've not only got to deal with the Hale Hospital budget, but we've got to deal with the, uh, the new the mandated walls that they have to go ahead and build as far as the flood walls, as far as a sewer line project, as far as the capping of the landfill, and those are all mandated. Their people are saying you've got to do that, and then the fact is if the money's not going to come from somewhere, then people start to look at where can you cut. And these folks are looking over their shoulders oftentimes, no? Absolutely. A lot of those unfunded mandates, um, y you know, we, we have to find a way to do it. We're, we're going to be hopeful that the state's in a better situation, and uh, we count on the state a lot, and we've been fortunate to have uh, Representative Dempsey and uh, Senator Bedore, you know, treat us pretty well uh, uh, every budget time, but we can't depend on it. But we need the, the state to get going. We need, uh, we don't have a lot of growth anymore. Uh, we need to look to try to bring some more of broader business base in here would be helpful because the growth isn't going to come from the real estate end, uh, you know, like it did years ago. So, yeah, I, I think that's part of it. I think the mayor and the city council really has to uh, get creative to be able to find revenue sources that will be able to be maintained. You know, if you're talking about the mayor and the city council trying to be creative, how would you be creative in being able to try to make some of those things happen? I would... Um, there, there are a few things we need to do. We need industry to come into the city. We have to be able to be industry friendly. Uh, that creates jobs. Uh, that's what I do for a living. I, uh, I run a temp agency, so I get people jobs. And there aren't enough jobs in this city. You know, uh, I think they talk about the unemployment rate being around 8% in the city, and 
kind of think it's a little bit more than that. You know, people get frustrated and come off the rolls. But we have to introduce the right type of uh, industry. Uh, we've heard a, a lot about the Neo plant that's coming in and, you know, uh, there's a lot of debate, is that the right type of industry for our city? It's going to be a few jobs and it's controversial and that process hasn't really been defined. And what do you do with the waste? But we need industry. We, we need uh, to be able to broaden that tax base a little bit. And we do need to find revenue sources. I hear about the selling water to Atkinson or Plasto and uh, I, I don't think that's a, a good plan only because that's kind of a limited resource. You know, we have 61,000 people in the city. I think we're rated uh, with our capacity to be around 71,000, 74,000 uh, with the water resources we have. And if we grow in the next 10 years, 20% like we did in the last 10 years, then we're, we're in trouble. So uh, we got to find a way. We hope the state gets better. We hope this economy gets better. But we have to look under every rock and be very, uh, very uh, stingy when it comes to uh, contracts and things like that, but we have to be fair as well. You know, are there any things that you take a look at? We've got four minutes left. You take a look at what the present city council has done or the different things that they've been involved with that you would have recommended they've gone in a different direction. What do you think those would be? Well, th th there's uh, one that comes to mind is uh, when we uh, had the two bridges, uh, it was actually three bridges, the Millville, two bridges there in the Whittier. Uh, I think the Whittier was just, uh, uh, open today or they had a little ceremony there today, but uh, um, the council had an opportunity to, uh, I think it was $205,000 total bill for that and the state picks up half of it. Well, we bonded that $100,000 uh, and I remember that vote when they brought it before the council, it had to be kind of rushed through and the council, uh, I know there were a few of the uh, folks on the council that would have liked more time to review that to decide can we pay for this and avoid the finance charge on that. And I think uh, the council voted on it that evening because there was pressure to do so. I think I would have backed off of that and tried to make the make uh, my peers, you know, push this aside because the city didn't have the information isn't a good excuse mm -hmm. for rushing through a vote to spend the, the people's money. I would, how I would have you, done that differently. And you would have done that differently by postponing that or revising that? I would have. I would have made sure, uh, you know, it's, it's not the city council's uh, um, issue that the city wasn't ready. I would have pushed that off for a couple, uh, at least the next week till the city could have uh, proven to that council that this was the best way to go. A hundred and a uh, hundred thousand dollars in change is a lot of money. Uh, we should have been able to look to our general fund for that, I believe. Okay. If we talk about one of the things that, that uh, maybe is almost like the third rail when you're dealing with the Haverhill City Council when it, ever, when it ever comes up every year with regard to taxes, and that's tax classification. Very, very touchy subject. You live in the city of Haverhill. You have a business in the city of Haverhill. You have commercial property in the city of Haverhill. I mean, the fact is that uh, other area locales, uh, if they either don't have tax classification at all and it's straight across the board, or they do have it, and sometimes it's disproportionate. And some, and there isn't a year that goes by that the that business leaders don't stand up and say, "Hey, listen, can you go ahead and do something for us and see what what can be done here?" You kind of tread a very, very interesting line here because it can affect you, but you also have to go ahead and deal with your constituency too. And being able to be a person that's looking to go ahead and regain a seat on the city council, what would your what would your take be on tax classification given the precarious economic times that we all find ourselves in right now? Absolutely. Uh, my, my two years on the council, that was the most um, hotly debated and contested uh, issue that came in front of us. That and the Halloween, should it be on Saturday or the last? Uh, <laughs> but uh, seriously, uh, the, the uh, Chamber of Commerce comes in every year and looks yeah. for a break, but they know realistically that, that homeowners up against it also. Uh, the DOR, recommends that uh, the split between residential and commercial industrial should be 30-70. Uh, I think the last time I was on that vote, it was around 17 to, you know, uh, you know 83. So uh, we really need to uh, bring that back in line with DOR recommends, and that's inviting industry in. And uh, how do you entice them? You have to, uh, we, we got in Southwick, and that was a, a lot of help with the state. And so you, you gotta be business friendly, but you can't do it at the uh, peril of, of the re residents. They're up against it. Fair enough. Mike McGonigal running for election to regain a seat on the city council. Wish you the best of luck. 
And also say a special hello to your aunt because she always likes to watch you on this program, I know. Hi, babe. How are you? Well, okay. Thank you Thanks so very much. much, Mike. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment.